It's probably been a few years since you got your first ever smartphone, and I'd give a guess that the phone you have now is most likely way faster. It's obvious that the reason for this is that technology and processing power has improved significantly over the years, and the rate of this improvement can be attributed to Moore's law. It's not really a law to be honest, more an observation made by Gordon Moore, the co-founder of Intel back in 1965. Its definition is that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles about every two years. Essentially, this means that we would get more powerful processing power for less and less money. An observation like this grows at an exponential rate, which realistically we can't keep up with as the transistors we build today approach the size of atoms and quantum effects stop the transistors from working as they should. The smallest transistor produced today is 3 nanometers long, which is about 23,000 times smaller than the width of a human hair. Two nanometer transistors seem to be possible for volume production within two or three years, with one nanometer transistors still being a long way off. So according to scientists, in its strictest sense, Moore's law no longer applies, as chip densities aren't doubling every two years anymore. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the rule of thumb is dead. In its current state, Moore's law is still providing exponential improvements to the tech space, as the trend is still there even though it's at a slower pace. So what comes next? Well, there's still some juice left in making the transistors as small as possible and extracting some performance, but the miniaturization of transistors is physically limited. So the next step for the chase in performance requires something different. One of the things that is driving the next sequence of Moore's law developments is artificial intelligence. In fact, AI is outpacing the timeframes that Moore's law sets by a substantial amount. Instead of doubling every 18 to 24 months, the computational force that AI has brought to the table over the last decade has doubled about every six months. These improvements in performance stem from three pillars of convergence, being that there are new algorithm techniques which are based on deep learning and neural networks, large data sets being more readily available, and finally, machines have increased in computational power. Quantum computing has also emerged as a way in which we are able to increase our computing power without the physical limitation of electrons and silicon transistors. Quantum computing is based on using quantum bits and quantum effects like entanglement and superposition to boost its processing capability. For example, if your normal computer were to figure its way through a maze, it would go down every branch individually until it finds the right path. A quantum computer will go down each path of the maze at the same time. This makes quantum computers incredibly fast and efficient. Another proposed way in which computational power can be increased is by using advanced monolithic 3D integrated circuits, which will be able to accommodate multifunctional devices within a single chip. This technology would greatly increase integration density and enable high bandwidth communication. There are plenty of other projects and ideas in the pursuit of increasing processing power and its efficiency, ranging from spintronics where the spin of electrons are used to optical computing, where light is used to perform computations. There are of course many challenges and obstacles that need to be overcome before some of these more ambitious ideas become available for volume production, but it seems that Moore's law and spirit hasn't died yet. We're still pushing boundaries, and in some instances, breaking through them. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Will these new technologies help us increase computational power at a rate never seen before? Or is the idea of Moore's law not attainable anymore? And if you didn't know before, now you know.